Welcome back to Bomber's Workshop. Thanks so much for joining me here once again. It's always nice to have you back. This time, we're gonna install one of my Bomber Fab rear bumpers on this first generation four-door sidekick. First generation spans 1989 to 1998 four-door Suzuki sidekick. So the first thing you're gonna do, of course, is remove the stock bumper cover and the stock bumper. Stock bumper cover has been removed from this vehicle already, but I'll just quickly go over how that was done. There is some variation between models and years in terms of how the rear bumper cover is removed, but they're all fairly similar, so we'll go over that now. Once you open up the rear door, you'll find that there's a series of screws which need to be removed from underneath the sill here. Those are sometimes really challenging to get out. If you find that you just can't unscrew them and they won't break off for you either, um, the method that I use for that is to use a hole saw in a drill and I remove the uh, pilot bit or the centering bit. And you choose a bit that's just large enough to go over the head of those screws. This one may be a little too large. I just grabbed it as an example, but you can use that to go over the heads of those screws with a drill and drill just through the plastic so that it will pop away from the, uh, from the vehicle itself and that will allow you to remove the bumper once you've got the rest of the hardware off. And the rest of the hardware consists of three screws underneath and then many models have a little mud guard section down here which have a couple of 10 millimeter uh, screws in them, I believe 10 millimeter heads. Um, and once you've got all that off, the rear bumper cover, as far as I remember, comes off is quite easily after that. There's no more, no more fasteners to worry about beyond that point. Then you have to remove the uh, bumper itself, which is three really obvious bolts up here. This one's broken off on this example, but there's three to remove, generally speaking. And then there's a couple underneath, which we'll look at when we get the vehicle up on the hoist. And what we'll also do is chase the threads for the stock tow hitch locations because those are used to mount the Balmer Fab bumper. We wanna make sure those threads are nice and clean and ready to receive new hardware. So we'll just remove those bolts from the top of the bumper. These are a 12 mil head, 12 millimeter. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot left holding this guy on. So we'll lift it up on the hoist now and you'll have a look at exactly what that is. So now we see why this is held in so flimsily is there's supposed to be two more uh, bolts here and here, which are gonna be 12 mil heads as well. But in this case, they've been replaced by just uh, some sheet metal screws. So that's why it's barely being held on. So I'll remove those and uh, the bumper shell will be off. And then we'll have a look at uh, cleaning up the threads for the, um, the standard tow hitch locations. So now that we're up on the hoist, you can get a really good look at the bolt hole locations for the uh, Balmer Fab bumper to bolt up to. And again, these are the stock tow hitch locations. So these are designed to be you know, the strongest point of the vehicle. So they work great for uh, a bumper that's gonna be used for recovery purposes or for towing or uh, anything else which requires kind of a heavy duty application. And that is what we're gonna be cleaning up here uh, to make sure that, every, that the threads are ready to accept a brand new bolt. So, these are 12 millimeter by 1.25, and I use a tap to chase those. You could use an actual thread chaser if you want. They're slightly different than a tap. This is a, obviously a tap. Um, again, I, now what I use is a, a chuck that mounts to a 3 8 uh, ratchet extension, and that gives me a lot of access. If you have your standard, whoops, if you have your standard T handle, uh, obviously you're not gonna be able to swing that around in these tight quarters, so you, you wanna have a setup like this. But what I do is I use a um, uh, lubricant to just lube up the threads really, really thoroughly. And go ahead and run that in very gently, making sure that we're not cross-threaded. And just run that through. Clean those threads right up and do the same to all four locations. Now, the issue that you're gonna come across, as you can see, this one's going nice and smooth. But the issue that you'll come across is accessing this bolt hole here. And in order to get that nice and uh, clear for, for uh, your top to get into, you wanna remove the um, fuel, can fuel tank skid plate. 
Now for me, that's no issue at all because I have to remove it since I'm going to be removing or replacing rather the uh, fuel tank cross member on this vehicle, which is a really suspect place. You should always check your fuel tank cross member to see if it's rotted. In this vehicle, it certainly is. So it's worth checking that. And there you go, clean those threads up. And then we wanna do this one as well. But as you can see, I don't have access to get in there. So I'm gonna to have to remove this skid plate. So in my case, the bolts that hold the fuel tank and the fuel tank skid plate on are quite rusted. And so I'm gonna use that same lubricant just to give them a chance to loosen up overnight. I have this vehicle in the shop for a few days, so it's uh, gonna be advantageous to do that. Um, and if you encounter really rusted looking bolts in these areas as well, I would suggest you do the same. Spray them, leave them overnight and come back to it. So you can see the kind of buildup I've gotten out of there. Pretty obvious that it's well worth chasing those threads so you don't wind up having uh, distorted threads or having your bolt bind when you try to install it into dirty old threads which haven't had anything in them for 30 plus years. And now that our fuel tank bolts have sat overnight with some penetrating oil on them, I'm gonna to try to remove these. We're gonna do them one at a time, remove one of the bolts, pull the uh, skid plate away, replace the bolt to hold the skid or the uh, fuel tank in position, and then do the other one. We might have to do the fronts as well, or it may swing away enough that we can access it. Let's find out. So this has dropped away less than I expected. I figured I'd be able to get the bolt back in there, but I cannot. So instead we'll go to the forward mount, which goes into the frame. That's also a 14 millimeter socket. So this one does not secure the fuel tank. It only secures the skid plate. So now we can pull the tank down and get the bolt back into this location or pull the skid plate down. So you can use a wrench to tighten this back in and secure the fuel tank. And now we can do the other side. And as you can see, the skid plate drops away nicely and we have access to that bolt now. So I chased the threads on all but the one that we couldn't access yesterday. So we only have this one left to do. And there you go. Once again, you can see that there was a lot of debris in those threads and it was well worth chasing them before we started to install new hardware. So now we just reinstall the skid plate in the reverse order uh, by just placing this bolt in first, removing this guy, putting it back in, and then also replacing the one on the front, obviously. And then we can go ahead and get back to our rear bumper installation. And now we can cut off this tie down loop using a zip disc or cutoff wheel on an angle grinder. Well, I meant to hit record for the uh, cutting of that and I forgot, so we don't have any video of that. But anyway, it's been cut off with a zip disc and now you wanna just flatten this area out till it's nice and smooth with a sanding disc and this one you can just smooth off so it's not sharp and forget about it. And now we've got nice flat access for our brackets to contact these two points that they need to bolt into. And there you are. The safety loop or tie down loop has been cut off and the bottom part here has been smoothed out. Now you don't have to get it completely flush with the frame itself, just flush with the uh, cap that is the end of this cross member. Um, there's gonna be a spacer plate provided with your bumper that brings this surface down so that uh, when we put the bracket on or the bumper on the bracket will clear this shoulder nicely. So that's it. We're ready for installation of the bumper at this point. So we'll bring the vehicle back down and uh, fit the bumper up to it. All right, so here we are back on the ground. You can see that I have got my bumper on a very fancy little trolley that I have. Since I install these all the time, it's important for me to be able to do it as easily as possible. Now, if you want to recreate that and build a trolley with a uh, hydraulic lift on it yourself, you're more than welcome to do so. But the general method is simply to use a couple of stands 
um, of the appropriate height to set the bumper in place. Now you've got uh, holes on the bottom of the frame, um, which are gonna correspond with the uh, holes in the bottoms of the brackets here. So all you need to do is get those reasonably lined up and then you can go ahead and uh, bolt the bottom up, thereby getting the bumper positioned. So it's pretty easy to dry fit. There's gonna be two more mounts that we need to deal with and that's gonna be where the welding comes in. And those are these side mounts in here. It might be a little dark, I apologize for that. You can see one over on that side, I believe. But anyway, we'll look at those closer later. I've already gone ahead and done a quick dry fit, and I've found that, as is pretty common with my bumper, that fits real tight under the uh, headlights, or sorry, the tail lights here. So I'm gonna remove these little rubber strips. It's just two Phillips screws uh, that uh, they need to be removed in order to take those off. Uh, and that's gonna give us just that little bit more room that we need to get the bumper to fit really comfortably. You may or may not find that's the case in your situation. There are slight discrepancies on vehicles. Um, so just do a dry fit and see if you need to do that, but I'm gonna remove them now. All right, so with our little rubber pieces removed, we've got that little bit of extra room that we need. And now we'll go ahead and put our bumper in position and bolt it up to the bottom of the frame. So you, this is where you want to use the spacer plates that are included. This is what uh, gets the uh, bottom bracket past that shoulder that we looked at earlier on the bottom of the frame. So this just positions right on top of the bracket. So the spacer plate just goes between the frame and the bottom bracket of the bumper and obviously the holes get lined up and you pass the bolts through them and that spacer plate brings the uh, bracket down past this little lump in the frame. And with our spacer plates in place we're going to use our 12 millimeter by 1.25 bolts um, to secure the bottom of the bumper to the frame. So again spacer plate in place and bolts into the bottom of the frame. And now we can snug those up and that will put the bumper in position to mark the uh, hardware positions on the side of the frame, which is the last securing item. Now, like we talked about earlier, all th four of those bolts are accessible other than the forward bolt on the uh, passenger side of the vehicle, sorry, driver side of the vehicle. Um, that one, you're gonna have to run in by hand and tighten with a wrench. And that's thanks to the clearance at the skid plate there. All right, our bumper is snugged up in position. And now we're gonna make sure we're happy with the angle this way. So we're gonna look at the side of the vehicle. What you wanna do is line up your bumper with the uh, body line, obviously, tilting it this way or this way. And the way to do that is just by adding or, or relieving pressure on the receiver. So in my case, I have this jack so I can jack the bumper up at the very back to push the front down, or I can relieve pressure at the back to allow the front to tilt up. You wanna do that by some method. You could just put a two inch by two inch square tube uh, that's you know, maybe about three or four feet long in the back of there, and then have somebody lift or press down on it to get that appropriate angle. And once you've got it positioned exactly where you want it, you're gonna go ahead and mark the side of the frame. So I'll put the, uh, the camera down and we'll show you that. So in my case, as you can see, the bumper lines up quite nicely. I would say that it's maybe a tiny bit low at the front. Uh, I would point to that, but I can't because I'm holding a camera and also a light. Um, but the front of the bumper, not the back of the bumper, is a little bit low. So I might just uh, allow the receiver to relax a little bit to go down in order to bring the front of the bumper up. Um, and uh, then once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the side of the frame. So now that the bumper is bolted up to the bottom of the frame and it's sitting level on the vehicle the way you want it to, you can mark the uh, side of the frame 
using the hole in the, uh, the bracket as a guide. Uh, you want to make that as centered as possible because, of course, this is going to position your bumper uh, on that angle that we just talked about. Um, so what you're going to do here is just mark the center or the very outside diameter of that hole. Generally, I kind of try to do both. I, I'll uh, go around the outside diameter and then I'll make a cross in the center and try to see that those are both nicely aligned when I remove the bumper. And if there was any discrepancy between them, I might put the bumper back on and double check that. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so again, sorry about the terrible lighting. There's nothing I can do. But I'm going to take a silver pencil and draw around here. I'm using silver just because the bumper, or the, I mean the frame, is black, so it's easier to see. So there's my outside circle, and then I'm going to go from top to bottom and from side to side and make myself a little cross, and that should wind up pretty centered in that circle. If it isn't, then I'm going to be questioning my, uh, my positioning. But otherwise, we can go ahead and weld a nut in place in that position once we have removed the bumper again. And with the bumper off, you can see the hole that I marked, and you can see a part of the line got knocked off when I actually center punched. Uh, but there was a line going this way and right down the middle, and it looked nice and centered. So I used my center punch to go right in the middle there, made myself a mark, and now I can uh, use that to set my, my nut in place with. And now we can drill out that center punch. And I drill it out to a half inch, and then that way when we uh, put a half inch bolt through our half inch nut, it's going to locate itself perfectly in there so we weld it exactly in position. And there you are, drilled out to a half an inch. And now you want to clear the area around here so that you can weld it. Just clean that up with a, a sanding disc on a little two inch grinder is what I use. And there you go, all cleaned up and ready to weld. So now I've got my bolt run all the way through the nut so that I can insert it into the hole and weld the nut in place. Okay, so I have tack welded the nuts in place just by placing the uh, bolt through the nut and the nut, then the bolt into the hole as I showed you. And now we're good to go and place the bumper back up on the, the vehicle, bolt it up on the bottom and the side bolt should go in nice and smooth while everything's positioned exactly as we want. If that's the case, we'll simply remove the bumper, fully weld those bolts, brush everything down and clean it up, paint it and uh, do the final install. If there's any issues, of course, we'll uh, remove the tacks on those nuts and uh, move them accordingly. And as you can see, the hole lines up perfectly. So now I can remove the bumper confidently and weld up both of those nuts. And then we'll uh, just brush them, paint them, and install the bumper for the final time. All right, so we have added the hardware, welded it fully, brushed it all down, primed it, painted it, and I uh, brushed the back of the cross member here for my customer as well, got rid of the rust and painted that up also just to protect it a little better. But at this point, we're ready to fit the bumper to the vehicle and do the final install. And that's how you install a Bomber Fab rear bumper on your 89 to 98 four-door Suzuki Sidekick.
I hope you like it. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm sorry for the poor lighting throughout the video. It's incredibly difficult to get lighting bright enough to work for video. Uh, and I'm a one man show, so I have nobody to hold lights or cameras or any of that kind of stuff. So it's challenging on my own, but I've done my best for you. If you have any issues, you can always contact me.